Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this particular tutorial, we are going to learn about the SharePoint REST API. And I'm going to cover a very interesting scenario on how you can batch files from a library or a list using Power Automate. So let me first talk you through the scenario. You and my friends, I have got a lot of files in my SharePoint document library. Let's quickly add a column and let's check the ID column out here, right? I have got a lot of files. They are a lot. In fact, let me show you the total number of files that I have in this particular document library. So I go to site contents and the name of my library is batching files and I have 601 items. Perfect. So the scenario is like this. My boss has asked me to create a batches of 100. So let's say from ID 1 to ID 100 is the first batch of files. I want to merge them or process them. Then from 101 to 200, batch number 2. And from 201 to 300, batch number 3. And so on and so on. How do I achieve this? I want to automate this process. I want to create a Power Automate. Let's quickly get into Power Automate and look if we can create it out of the box. So I'll create an instant flow, right? This is my instant flow. And for some reason, my Power Automate is behaving a bit weird. So instant flow. And the first thing that I'll do as a Power Automate developer is I can say get file properties, right? So get file properties only. At this point, I can pass it the name of the site. I can put in the name of my library. And then I can go ahead and filter options. Now, as I told you, this is about Power Automate. So I want to show you how it can be done using the REST API as well. And why are we doing a REST API over the out of box options? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dock this and my SharePoint side by side, okay? Because I want you to understand the basics as well. So first thing, if you are new to SharePoint or if you are new to SharePoint REST API, SharePoint REST API is a web interface that allows developers, basically it's for developers to interact with the SharePoint data. They can perform CRUD operations such as create, read, update, and delete, right? Now you are a Power Platform or a no-code developer. Now I'll say, Clevin, why do I need this? Because at times the user interface that you see out here might not expose everything. And if you want to go ahead and understand your SharePoint data set better, it's very important to understand the REST API. So that being said, let's understand the REST API. So here, if you see SharePoint REST API would be very similar to the get file that you see out here. Now, let me help you understand that. So basically the format of SharePoint REST API is basically underscore API web list. Now this is getting us all the list in a site. I want to get a specific list. How do I do that? I can first see if my list is available, right? My list is available. Its name is batching files, right? Batching files. And if you see each of the variable has a D result, that means it has a particular property bound to it. I want to query a particular property. How do I do that? So if I want to get specific to this particular library, I can say get by title. If you see the title is the property and give it the name batching files, right? And bang, I get an error. Why? Because I have fat fingers. I put a dot at the end. But this is the data that you're getting specific to the files. Perfect. We are getting the data specific to the files, but what I want is I want the data specific to a property, for example, right? So if I add a compose, 
This returns me a set of properties. For example, the ID. I want to get the IDs. In this case, if I do a control F on this particular screen, I get good, 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 right? But I want to select the items. Do I get the IDs? The answer is no. So what I want to do is I want to get the items. So I'll type in items, right? Now, if I go ahead and do a control F, and if I do an ID, right, I should find the ID as well. So let me quickly find the ID. So it's returning me all the items, right? All the items, and I want to get the ID, the colon ID. And here, my friends, it gives me IDs, right? In fact, it gives me many, many IDs out here. That's good. It gives me IDs, so that is awesome. Now that it gives me IDs, now next what I want to do is, I got the IDs. I need to understand, I could, I need to add a filter. Let's try to understand filters. Now, when I talk about filters, the filters is a way to retrieve a specific set of information, right? A specific set of information that I want to go ahead and retrieve. It's giving me a lot of data, not only IDs. If I type in D file ref, it gives me file system files. It gives me other properties such as modified. I want to only get a, a set, a batch of IDs, right? Or return only the IDs. How can I go ahead and do that? So let me quickly show you that as well. So if you want to get an ID, so you need to add the select query. Now we are working with the filter and I can say select ID. Now if you see, it just gets me the IDs, right? It does not get me the modified. It does not get me anything related to files. It's only getting the ID. So I'm getting an array, but an array has only IDs in it. I hope that you are following with me. If I want to get, instead of ID, if I want to get a different property, such as a file ref, I can just pass in file ref out here and it will return me the file refs, right? All the file refs that I have. Now, this is good. Let's get back to our ID. So we could get the IDs, right? If I want to go ahead and get the top, 20 IDs, so I can just say and dollar top 20, right? I can just get the top 20 IDs. So it just gave me the top 20 IDs. That's awesome. If I want to go ahead and order by, I can also order by the IDs. I can quickly do this and again and dollar order by IDs, right? That That's pretty much it. So here we have understood order by top count. We can also limit views, etc. Right? So you get a basic gist of how the REST API works. But now we have a challenge. We need to get them in batches. The idea, we had 600 items, so we wanted to get them in the batch of hundreds. How do we go ahead and achieve that? I'm going to append this with a query. It's going to say skip token page and um, page D is equals to true. And then at the end, I'm passing it an ID, right? So here, I'll just modify this so that we understand this better. I'll say, get me the top 100 and start with the number zero, right? So if I go and do this, so it gives me ID number one to ID number 99, and this is my 100. Now I want to get the items from 100 to 200, right? So I'll say 100 out here and look at this. I'll do a control F and I'll say the ID, right? It gets me from 101 to 200. Understand this, we are getting the files in the batches of 100. Isn't that awesome? I'm telling still get me the top 100, but it's getting me from 101 to 200. If I want to get it from 200, and if I do a control F, it gets me from 201 to 300. Isn't that awesome? 
what happens if we put in 600, right? It has only one item. So if I put in 600, it just gets me back one item. Isn't that awesome? That means you can get files in batches and process them. So this particular thing that I showed you, is it available in Power Automate? Let me just get back to this window. The answer is no, it's not available in Power Automate because you cannot go ahead and have everything in the UI. Now, the big question you might ask is, Clavin, how do I use this REST API in Power Automate? So let me quickly get rid of this. We don't need this as well because we are going to use a different action. So the action that we are going to use is send HTTP request to SharePoint. And for this request, I need to pass it the file name, or sorry, the site name. The method is get, the other methods can be patch, post, put, and delete. For this particular tutorial, we just need to get the items, right? So I'm going to get the items, and then I need to pass it the sample URL. So I can just copy this in and paste it out here. In this case, it will get me only one item. So that's not good. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a power automate such that it gives me batches of items, right? So in this case, what does it return? It returns me an array, right? So I want to dynamically, so I want to dynamically pass the variables to the array. And how do I do that? What I can do is I can say initialize variable. I'll pass it the variable name. I'll give it my skip value. So let's say that I want to start. How did I start? I started from zeros, right? So let's say that the first time it goes, I want zero. The second time I go, I want to get 100, 600, right? This is what I want to do. So what did we do in this? So we are going to change this value. And every time it loops, it gives me a batch of items. You'll see that in action in a little bit, right? First and foremost, it tells me that this is not a valid array. So zero, 200, 100 to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to, is this a comma? Perfect. So 300 to 400, 400 to 500, 500 to 600. This is what we need. Now that we have this, what I want to do is I want to get those in the batches, right? I want to get those in the batches. So I can say, apply to each loop, go and get the files in the batches, but get the skip values. And I'm going to pass my HTTP action in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this value this value out here with the current item. So the current item in the array. And what I can do is I can add maybe I'll just add a compose and I'll pass it the body. Right? I'll just give it a name and let me run my flow. So if I click on test, so you see that it is looping seven times. So the flow has completed. I'm much interested in the seventh one because here, if I click on show raw output, it just gives me one. So this is perfect. If I go to number six out here, right, it gets me from 501 to maybe 600. Perfecto. So we are getting the files in batches. Now we want to create the element or we want to populate this particular thing in, in an HTML table. Let's take that as an example, but you can do one, wonders with it, right? So for this demo, let's keep it simple. So I'm going to say parse, right? And I can say parse JSON. So parse JSON is an action in Power Automate where you can pass it the sample schema something like this. And if you see, it's going to give me the IDs. That's all right. Uh, let me just pass it the body. And then in the compose, I'm going to get rid of the compose and let me just get the, just create a table. So create HTML table. So columns, 
I say show all, I'm not so automatic, I just say custom, and I say, okay, let, let me create it automatic, it doesn't matter. At this point, if I run it, I should have an HTML table, and it should have IDs from 1 to 100, 100 to 200, and so on and so on. Oops, today Power Automate is not my friend, it's not behaving as expected. But what I want to do is, because it didn't behave as expected, I'll take this opportunity to change the ID to the file leaf ref or the file reference. So I have the file references in the batches of 100. So I want to change select. I just say, yes, we need the file ref, right? And I'll save it. Compose my friend. Tier. Add the body. Let me get rid of this. Let me save it and I'm going to log this in. So let's see. This time it should not give me an error. I bet it should not give me an error. Perfect. So I didn't mess this up. So here I can say show raw outputs. I can copy this. I can go back here. I can click on edit. Now I can say parse JSON. Parse JSON. Generate schema, so that's all right. I can just pass it output of the compose, and then I can say create HTML table. Click on show all automatic, that's all right. Let's see how does this work out. Let's see if this works out, by the way. Perfect. So here it gave, gave me some tables. So and this is how it looks like. If I just wanted to have the file leaf ref, I should have just said, okay, edit, create HTML table, custom, file leaf ref, and passed it a property out here. But I hope this quick tutorial was informative. You see that you are getting the data, you are getting the file leaf refs out here, just avoid the metadata tag. And you can work with the data out here, right? You can work with the data. So here, my friends, you have learned about batching. I hope this quick tutorial was informative. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.